Hey David, what's going on? You're looking worse than usual today. Thanks for noticing. I realized today that I'm older than I was yesterday. I'm getting older and there's nothing I can do about it. No worries, David. You just need to channel your inner Spaniard and follow me to the Fountain of Youth in Schiller Park, Illinois. Huh? According to local legend, there's a Fountain of Youth in a park there. People drive from miles away to bask in its glorious, regenerative properties. Well, obviously there's no other options for me at this point. Let's go. Yeah! Yeah! Is it working? Are you feeling younger? While this is delicious and all, we probably shouldn't rely on superstition and myth. Maybe we should look into the science of it. Maybe you're right. While we know there is no fountain of youth, people have never stopped trying to escape death or aging. Baseball star Ted Williams and many others have actually frozen themselves at cryonics facilities in the hopes of being unfrozen at a later date and brought back to life. Very well. However, no scientific evidence exists that shows that this is even possible. So for now, we'll leave cryonics to science fiction and Sylvester Stallone movies. But fear not, rapidly aging viewers. There is a man who has devoted his life and expertise to the aging problem. Dr. Aubrey de Grey is a renowned scientist in the field of gerontology. He has appeared on the Colbert Report, done TED Talks, has an awesome beard, and believes that the first person that will live to be a thousand years old may have already been born. I am the Chief Science Officer of a foundation, a charity based in California named Sense Research Foundation. But our goal is to essentially develop rejuvenation biotechnologies, which essentially means regenerative medicine against the diseases and disabilities of old age. In case you didn't know, we are all aging all the time. Look how much I'm aging right now. Ah! Unfortunately, at this point in the world, it is completely unavoidable. We are going to keep aging until our deaths. But what the heck is aging? I think our friend Aubrey can help explain this, hopefully with an analogy to help us all understand it a little bit better. Aging is actually a much simpler thing than most people think. It's not some kind of mysterious enigma at all. It's just the same in the human body as it is for a simple man-made machine like a car or whatever. In other words, just like any other machine with moving parts, the human body does damage to itself as an intrinsic, unavoidable side effect of its normal operation. We can get rid of that damage by external means, by scraping away the rust in the case of a car, or by regenerative medicine in the case of the human body. God, I love analogies. But our body and our cells already do their own maintenance and cleaning. Why haven't they gotten to the point of slowing down the aging process? The cell obviously has a lot of machinery already built into it that breaks down waste products. And those waste products obviously therefore do not accumulate. But there are some things which accumulate so slowly that evolution has not been induced to do anything about them. Historically speaking, man tends to die before the aging process completely takes over. It's only been in recent history where we can live comfortably enough to not expect to die from external causes. Remember how your body is like a car that needs maintenance? Well, much like an engine with carbon buildup, your cells accumulate waste as well. And it turns out that malfunction and waste buildup on an intercellular level are the main drivers behind most diseases related to old age. These include macular degeneration and the trigger for most cardiovascular disease. I hope Dr. DeGray is working on some of these issues. I don't want to go blind or have my heart stop anytime soon. You should eat better then. <laughs> I should. The approach that we've been taking is to augment the ability of the cell to break things down. So what we're doing is we're finding other species that have enzymes, have machinery to break down the substances that are problematic, that we can't break down. It turns out that it's usually quite easy to find bacteria that can do that sort of thing. So we have done this. We have found bacteria that can break down, for example, the type of oxidized cholesterol that accumulates in cells in the, in the artery wall and causes atherosclerosis. Now, we don't then think in terms of injecting these bacteria into the body. That would probably be, bad, be a bad thing. It would probably have lots of toxic side effects. But what we can do instead is figure out how the bacteria are doing it. We identify the genes and enzymes that they have that allow them to break down the substance in question. 
And then we can incorporate just those one gene or two into the human genome so that then the cell can destroy this thing that it couldn't normally destroy. And then you don't get the accumulation of that type of junk. So our cells will be cleaned and maintained. Will there be any limit on how long we can live? I don't see any reason why there should be a maximum to how long people can live once we get this preventative maintenance properly understood. Sweet! We'll have the potential to live forever. There is no way this could lead to any problems. Well, a lot of people might disagree with you on that. This would be a huge change for humanity. For so long we've known death to be a natural part of our life and inevitable. This could be cause for both hope and concern. If people don't die of old age, won't we have serious overpopulation issues? Does anybody really want to live to be a thousand? Won't people get bored? Would a 22-year-old college grad be able to compete in the job market against a healthy 600-year-old? Yet, there could be a lot of benefits. Any person could have the time to travel the entire world. You could spend multiple lifetimes gathering all the knowledge you want. You could have the potential to ride a jet ski with your great, great, great grandkid. One thing that people often get wrong when they think about the defeat of aging is they think about what the world will be like in a post-aging world, but they assume that everything else is going to be the same. And in fact, other things like, you know, the advance of automation and so on, these things are happening a great deal faster than any changes that would occur as a result of the development of real anti-aging medicine. We won't have any 200-year-old people for at least another 100 years, whatever happens, right? I don't look at this as a personal quest to, you know, not age myself. Certainly I'll be extremely pleased if these therapies are developed in time to benefit me, or indeed to benefit my loved ones, but the mathematics of it says that that's not the way that one ought to think. But if you look at it from a humanitarian perspective, then every single day that we bring forward the defeat of aging is 100,000 lives saved. So that's much easier to get worked up about. Thanks to the efforts of people like Dr. Aubrey de Grey, in the near future, aging may not affect us the way it does today. You know what, that's great and all, but I really don't want to wait that long. I'm going to try the fountain again. I'm not. Thanks to Dr. Aubrey de Grey for talking to us today. If you liked what you saw, please check out our subtle page and subscribe. If you don't do that, then the show might not live forever. Ah, refreshing. So what would you do if you stopped aging? Leave a comment below or make a video entitled like Entropy for the Good Stuff. Also, if you have any questions about reverse aging, leave a comment or make a video for that. And if you'd like to learn more about Dr. Aubrey de Grey and the work of the SENS Research Foundation, check out the links in the description below.